praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much But I'm nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing Thanks to our musicians and vocalists for our gathering music today. Good morning and welcome to worship at the Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit. I happily greet all who have gathered here in the sanctuary floor, those who are joining us on our streaming platform, those who maybe perhaps are here for the first time or are visiting. I do hope you find the service meaningful. Family Paint Night is August, anybody know? Ninth, that's right. It is August the 9th. Today is the last day for signing up. Um, see Holy Happenings for details. Holy Spirit Christian Nursery School is still accepting registrations for this fall. There are openings especially at the three-year-old level, but also in the four- and five-year-old levels as well. If you know of a family that this is seeking this type of early childhood education experience, please do make the referral. That concludes my announcements for the day. I would invite you to stand for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Spirit of God, you intercede for us with groanings too deep for words. When all seems lost, you heal our hearts and give us strength to carry on. Set our hearts and minds on you, great spirit, that we may know your abiding presence and never failing love. A reading from Romans. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with groanings too deep for words. And God, who searches hearts, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him for all of us, how will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ who died, or rather, who was raised. Who is also at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ. With affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things we are more than victorious through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Good news from Matthew, the 13th chapter. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which a man found and reburied, and when in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, and finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. This is the good news. Thanks be to God. We 
Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, our way, our life, our light, keep us forever faithful, trusting solely in your word. Amen. I recently heard the story of a man who went shopping for a new sofa. He knew what he had in mind, and so he went to a nearby furniture store to see if there was anything in stock that was close to what he was looking for. Now, there were colors to match and patterns to approve, and most of all, it had to be big enough to hold the numerous guests when the man entertained. There was one sofa in particular that looked like a possibility, and when the man asked the clerk about its seating capacity, the clerk said with the utmost of bravado and confidence, this sofa will hold five people with no problems. Well, that's, that's really good, the man said. But, and he paused, where am I going to find five people with no problems? Kind of sneaks up on you, doesn't it? Five people with no problems. How about three? How about one? Probably not. I read a devotional piece this week that described the difficulties and problems a woman was having as she happened to be in the grocery store. Her life had turned six ways to bad from marital issues to health concerns to financial distress, and the list went on. She was in front of the display marked Last Chance Groceries. Some were dented, some were without labels. And the woman felt like her life resembled one of those canned goods. So taking a deep breath, she picked up a can at random she took her choice to the checkout. She purchased the can, took it home where she opened it, only to find it was her favorite, peaches. If, like that woman, you are a person with problems, and you most certainly are, we are. I am. Then this passage from Romans, read a moment ago, is for all of us. For when you open these verses, you will find, like that woman in the store, a wonderful delight, a favorite. In fact, this passage from Romans is one of my favorite passages in the entire Bible. This is a monumental passage of promise certainty, favor, and delight, the likes of which are almost unparalleled in Scripture. And yet these verses are understated, at least in their location. They are in the middle of the book of Romans and at the end of the chapter. There are a few indicators from context to alert the reader that such a profoundly wonderful statement of faith and promise is about to be spread before them. And it reminds me of a fine piece of orchestrated music. It begins softly and quietly with what one can only be described as existential questions. What then shall we say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? Who is to condemn? And then the main question, who will separate us from the love of Christ? More quietly, will affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? And then the intrusion, I think, of verse 36, notwithstanding, the, continue, the crescendo begins again. No! In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
and feel the energy as the crescendo continues to build and then breaks, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Cue the crashing cymbals and the rolling drums and the blaring horns. The wave of God's promise has broken across the landscape of life. For Paul's original audience, these must have been powerful words. Angels, powers, and rulers speaks of the supernatural and the superhuman beings thought to have power. Nor things present, nor things to come speaks of the universality of Paul's certainty. For nothing which exists now or will exist in the future can separate humanity from God's love. The reference to height and depth is a reference to the path and influence of stars in human life. And whatever stars' powers might be, whether they have any or not, they cannot do this. Or anything else in all creation. Anything of which we are aware or anything of which we are unaware. Nothing has this power to separate us from the love of God. To Paul's list of distresses or discomforts, we can certainly add our own, for there is not one among us who is not without problems. Likely we can empathize with the woman in the grocery store, and to her list of marital and physical and financial ills, we can add our own. And not just the list of ills that have happened to us, but the ills from which we suffer which are by our own hand, of which we are the author. I speak of problems and pains and upsets that we, are ca that we caused and visited upon ourselves or others. I do not feel a need to list any, for we can all bring them to mind in an instant. And none of those that come to mind have the power to separate us from the love of God. Not a single one. Still, we feel a need to hear. The need of hearing that faithful promise of God on a frequent basis because it's so easy for us to convince ourselves that what is happening to us and what we have done to ourselves is so huge, so all-encompassing, so beyond the pale that it must be unforgivable and its power to separate must be real. But that is not the case. And we have the words of St. Paul to affirm this faithful reality of God's love once more. We also have the Lord's Supper, a meal where God in Christ comes so close to us as to be inside our very bodies. This table is set often. It is a reminder. Recall the words of institution. Do this in remembrance of me. This invitation is always open. And you need no reservations. In addition, at the 1030 service today, Hudson George will be adopted into the family of God, received into Christ's body through the sacrament of baptism. To Hudson will be made the promises of baptism, the very same promises made to all of the baptized, all of us here. Those promises are the forgiveness of sins, freedom from death and the devil, and the promise of everlasting life. Those promises will come true for us, and they will come true for us as well. These promises are inviolate. There is nothing that can separate us from them. These promises 
when opened in our lives, hold a beautiful sweetness that is a guaranteed favorite. In all life's problems, we are more than conquerors through God who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor things present, nor things to come, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I am convinced nothing will separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Thanks be to God. With the whole church, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Almighty God, we pray for the church and all servants of the gospel. Equip rostered and lay ministers to proclaim that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, searcher of our hearts. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the well being of creation, safeguard the environment clean polluted rivers and lakes, preserve the mighty tree and the tiny mustard seed and lift up advocates for sustainable practices, searcher of our hearts. Amen. Compassionate God, we pray for the nations, instill in all who govern the ability to discern between good and evil, free from those who are oppressed and protect those facing danger, promote peace across the world and in our towns and neighborhoods. 
searcher of our hearts. Merciful God, we pray for all in any need. Protect those fleeing from war, shelter any who are in poverty, clothe the naked, soothe all who grieve, and heal the sick, especially Andrea, the Beeler family, Ben, Tara, Michael, Helen, Tom, Glenn, Jane, Kate, Mark, Dick, Jace, Nancy, G, Fred, Dorothy, Karen, Mark, Bronson, Val, Fred, Pete, Phil, Wilma, Jim, Timothy, Scott, Jane, Nancy, Judith, Michael, Billy, and Aldana. In this time of thanksgiving for the new life through baptism given to Hudson George, hold him firmly in your promises and remind us all of the goodness of love and life through our own baptisms. Searcher of our hearts. Holy God, we pray for this congregation. Both those gathered today and those absent from our assembly grant safety to travelers and refreshment and safety for children attending summer camps or community programs. Give direction to any experiencing life transitions. Searcher of our hearts. Lord, we ask you to hear and answer the prayers of all that we are now spoken out loud and those that remain silently within our hearts. We lift them to you now. Searcher of our hearts. Eternal God, we give thanks for your saints who now rest from their labors. Inspire us by their witness to treasure the gospel and continually nourish us with your grace. Searcher of our hearts. Into your hands, O God, we commit all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. We are so thankful for your support of the ministry of this congregation and of God's church. If you have brought an offering to leave, there are plates in the back and there are options for giving online. And again, we thank you for the many ways you participate in and support our ministries here. Please rise. May the Lord of the kingdom be with you. Children of God, offer your hearts to the one who calls us to serve the world. God's people sing praises forever and ever. God, you bless us with gifts of love and moments of grace and mercy. For this earth and its beauty, we give you our thanks for our lives and for the opportunity to share them with those we love. We offer you our praise. Bless the gifts we lay before you, that they may be signs of your loving kingdom to a world awaiting good news. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and gave it to all saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. God, you have promised that nothing can separate us from your love. Be with your children who know hardship, distress, or persecution. Visit your beloved who experience famine, nakedness, peril, or sword. Abide with us in death as in life. 
Give us nothing to fear from angels or rulers, from things present or things to come, or in the face of powers or height or depth or anything else in all creation. Knowing that you did not withhold your own son, but gave him up for us all, write in us faith that you will bestow upon us everything else as well. We pray in union with Christ and the power of your Holy Spirit, who helps us in our weakness and intercedes with sighs too deep for words. Father of all, now and forever. Amen. God in community, holy in one, we would tell of your presence in us even as we pray as Jesus teaches us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now and forever. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment that we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest sea, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. If God is for us, what more do we need? Nothing can separate us from Christ's gracious love. If Christ is with us, what can stop us? Nothing can keep us from sharing Christ's gracious love and strength. Go with love as our guide. God is with us. 